problems which faced the frontier marshal, the matter of cattle stealing or rustling was the most dangerous. It was not a crime confined to hoodlums or fly-by-night cattle spreads. Many of the biggest cattlemen of the day were involved. To Marshal Wyatt Earp, a rustler was a rustler, big or small, and this belief plunged him into the notorious Rep Cantwell case. Dodge City erupted in bitter words and deadly gunfights. All the drinks are on me, boys. <laughs> 2,000 head and a rough trail, but they're all fat and sassy. Good job. Break it right up. Mr. Cantwell. Oh, howdy, Marshal. Take a chair, and I'll buy you the best milk in the house. Mr. Cantwell, I'd uh, like to see you alone in the back room, if I may. Oh, some of my boys in trouble? Well, here, I'll bail them out. No, sir. I can't wait? No. Well, excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> He was a sure good spender, though. I'll tell you, there's all three of them out here. Come on, drink it out. <laughs> well, what have they done? Mr. Cantwell, I have a warrant for your arrest. What? Five members of the Cattlemen's Association have accused you of rustling. You calling me a rustler? Well, sir, I caught two of your boys just outside of town with warm irons. Why, you... Look, I want to do this quietly. Who named against me? Just name them. Your lawyer can read the complaint. I want you to walk over to Judge Tobin's office and post your bond. Me accused of rustling. There's going to be some fighting about this. I'll find out who signed against me. The boss is in trouble, ma'am. Mr. Cantwell in trouble? There's talk that Earp and Shotgun Gibbs jumped one of his wagons outside of Dodge. And there's also talk he's been accused of rustling. Smiley, that's absurd. Do you reckon Mel Danaher signed a complaint or something? Mr. Danaher? Oh, he wouldn't do a thing like that. Just because he and Mr. Cantwell have been... Is Mr. Danaher in town? Well, here at the Dodge house, ma'am. I'll look into it. Well, would you do it quick, ma'am? Some of us bar Q boys are getting a mite edgy. Here's bail for myself and my men. Now, can I see the names on that complaint? Please, Judge. Not until he's formally arraigned. Why it really means we want you to cool off, Rep. Cool off? I'll get the names. I warned you they'd be shooting about this. There will be shooting. Why can't you ease up on this thing? Five men signed the complaint, Jim. All rep stole a few mavericks in his day, like a lot of other cattlemen I know. The law says it's a felony, Mr. Mayor. Sure, but the men accusing him, they've rustled stock same as him. Well, the Cattlemen's Association had the law passed. Now, if they don't want their members treated the same as hoodlums, then they should have the law repealed. You want shooting in the streets over this? I agree with Wyatt. Those ranchers will lynch a little rustler. When the truth hits them, they threaten gunplay. I think the question of who's a cattle thief should be settled in open court. I can't understand why you did it. You and Rep have been my dearest friends since Dave was killed. Why, Mel? Because you're going to marry Rep. He hasn't asked me. He will. Not now. Not with this rustling business to contend with. You've put your brand on stray cattle, and so have those men who signed the complaint with you. Well, it's done now. Well, you can go to Judge Tobin and, and withdraw the complaint. Big-hearted Mel. You were jealous, and I'm flattered, Mel. But Rep and his boys will go to shooting. All right. Let him. Emily, he's no good. I stopped those sharp tricks years ago, and reps kept right on. I ain't much better. Mel. Mel, you've got rep all wrong. His foreman and his cowhands do the stealing. He's too easy with them. He sure is. He sent me some steers after the drought wiped me out last summer, and half of them had doctored brands. Do you think rep would do a thing like that? 
He just told his foreman to lend me so many head and the boys palmed off the Russell steers. All right. I'll talk to the judge. Thanks, Mel. You and the judge are just a-heading for needless trouble there. How's that, Mr. Gibbs? Well, there's maybe 50,000 head of cattle there, driving towards the railroad. I ain't never seen a cow outfit yet that didn't steal a lost dogie or put its own brand on a maverick. Well, you missed the point. Well, I reckon I do. Judge Tobin and I think the law against rustling is too severe. Now, by enforcing it against the big fellas, maybe we can show them all up as hypocrites. Yeah, and show me up, too. You're a rustler? Well, you see, I found Roscoe on the prey when he was just a coat. He'd been brush branded, but I knowed the hair would grow out and cover it up. Why, Mr. Gibbs? Well, I got my side of it, too. If I hadn't have found Roscoe, he'd have died in the next blizzard. But, strictly speaking, I'm a rustler. Mr. Gibbs, your secret is safe with me. That ain't funny, what? Rustling's a fighting word. Mayor Kelly's plumb right. You ought to drop that case again, Cantwell. Now, don't start anything. And don't take any name calling, either. And leave Mel Donaher to me. I have an idea his name is on that complaint. Mm -hmm. Nick, one get McCarty. How'd this happen? Tony Josh Buck about being a rustler. Mel, Tony Levitt and the Bar Q hand just shot it out. Both hit. Put on your gun belt, Mel. Them Bar Qers are after us. I was gonna drop charges. Too late now. Shooting's commenced. Take him on over to the jail. I'm gonna see Judge Tobin. Hold on. You, uh, say you disarm most of them? Rep Cantwell, Mel Danaher are still out gunning for each other. Danaher? He's one of the men that signed the complaint, isn't he? Yes, sir. He got the four others to sign it, too. They'll be here tonight. Wyatt, maybe we bit off more than we can chew. Well, you can't back down now, Judge. I'll try and find Cantwell and Danaher. If we put them in jail for gun toting, their men may quit fighting, I hope. You hope? Well, I told you, didn't I? If you'd listened to me, I'd have got to the heart of the shindy. Heart? The widow Morrison. What's she got to do with it? Rep and Mel have both been courting. Rep won out. So Mel cooked up this stupid rustling complaint. She's over at the Dodge Hotel. You better go over there and talk to her quick. She might be able to stop this quarrel. But the first thing we got to do is dismiss this case against Rep. I don't know. You do that and you'll have your cow hands thinking they can scare the court. I'll come off your high horse, Wyatt. This is just plain stubbornness and you know it. Mr. Kelly, you want my star again? Now, now, gentlemen. Fine time to talk about turning in your star. Danaher's waiting for his friends and they'll take Cantwell and the whole town apart. Well, I'm tucking in my shirt tail. You tuck in yours, Mr. Mayor. Wyatt thinks I'm just a politician, but I'm trying to use a little common sense. I know, Jim, I know. I've got to give him a chance to restore law and order. How long you figure on giving him, Judge? Not long. Till tomorrow. Too long, believe me. I said until tomorrow. was going to call it off until some of his men got hurt. 
He promised me he would. Mel Donahue started the trouble. Well, where is he now? Out on the trail somewhere, looking for more friends to help him make more fights. Yeah, they'll come back with guns, Emily. Well, I told you about Mel and his black Irish temper. Rep, listen. Please go out to my place and, and wait there. I won't run. It won't be running. With my men and, and what's left of yours, we can, well, we can put up an even fight if we have to. Thanks, honey, but I don't drag you into a fight. I can hire some guns, make it even. More shooting. No, Rep, please, I... Yes, who is it? Marshal Earp, ma'am. Just a minute. He mustn't find you here. Go through the bedroom and down the fire ladder. Rep, you do as I say. Oh, all right. Sorry, I, uh, I wasn't quite dressed. That's quite all right, then. What can I do for you, Marshal? Oh, I don't know. Mayor Kelly uh, seems to think that you can stop the row between Mr. Kentwell and Mr. Danaher. I tried to do that. It didn't work. Oh, what went wrong? One of Mel's men called one of Rep's men a rustler. Then the guns went off. But the chief trouble is that you and Judge Tobin insist on prosecuting Rep. Mrs. Morris and I had a veterinarian take a look at the Santa Fe pens. He claims that Mr. Cantwell's herd has been brand tampered. Well, what herd hasn't? Come down and check my cattle by your standard. You think I was a rustler, too? I sure wish you'd have another talk with Mr. Denner. He's out on the trail somewhere, waiting for the other hypocrites who signed that complaint. Would you know where? No, Mr. Earp. Even if I could find Mel, he wouldn't listen. Well, I guess I'll just have to try and have a hand at it myself. Sorry to have bothered you. Sure. You're sorry. You men, rep out hiring gunfighters and Mel's coming in with fresh guns. I didn't pass the rustling law. It's just my job to try and enforce it. Then why don't you arrest your own chief deputy? Mr. Gibbs? Mr. Gibbs. Rep said his mule was hair branded as a colt. Why don't you ask Mr. Gibbs point blank? Well, I kind of think it'd be more point blank to try and find Mr. Danaher and arrest him before more shooting starts. But if you want to swear out a complaint against Mr. Gibbs, I'll serve the warrant. And try to get the evidence? What do you mean? Kill the poor animal, skin him, and see if the hair brand shows on the inner side. Well, I don't think that would be necessary. Mr. Gibbs is guilty, I'm sure he'd admit it. I doubt that very much. Mm. But why are we wasting time? All I want now is for you to find Mel and put him where he can't continue this fight. Well, I'll do my best, ma'am. We're in trouble. What went wrong? Rep and his boys got tetchy. They started shooting. Well? So can we. Johnny? Yeah. Back to the tavern. Round up a dozen good hands with a gun. Right. I got a hunch Herb is out looking for me. We better hold up right here till morning. Mr. Gibbs, you and the day patrol turn in. Things won't pop until daylight. I'll just make camp here in the office, wife. It's only a couple of hours till sun up. How did Dan or her give us the slip? Well, maybe he didn't want to have a shootout with Cantwell. Still got him charged with rustling, you know. The rep's lady friend may uh, charge you with stealing Roscoe. <laughs> Why, sure. Better get the gallows ready. I don't like it, Emily. I know. You'd rather fight it out with guns. But stealing a mule and threatening to... All right, then stay here. I've already told Rance what to do. If it doesn't work, you can still have your gunfight with Mel. And if you live, you'll go to jail for rustling. Emily! Goodbye, Rep.
Dear Marshal Earp, unless you dismiss charges against Rep by noon today, I will prove your chief deputy is a rustler. I hate to kill an innocent animal, but the lives of men are more important than beasts. Emily Morrison. Emily Morrison. Roscoe. You tell Judge Tobin to postpone Cantwell's hearing. I'm on my way to the Morrison Ranch. Ain't that shotgun, Gibbs? That sure is. I wonder where he's heading. It's mighty strange for him to send him away from Dodge right now. Hold it, boss. Who's that, yonder? That's Earp himself. Earp might have sent shotgun. He wouldn't leave. Hey, Rip, can't roll up for hearing at 10 o'clock? No. Uh -huh. Rip must have jumped his bail. He skun out on us. That's the trail to Mrs. Morrison's. Yeah. Maybe we'll catch him there. Come on. Oh. Howdy, Mr. Gibbs. Come from a mule. He's in the barn. Go get him. I ain't aiming to kill any of your hounds now. You go get him. Oh, no. Too bad, lady. Been a lot of talk in Dodge lately about Brandon. Maybe you ought to be branded. You wouldn't dare. I want my mule, and I want him without having to kill any humans. Now, you better go fetch him. I don't bluff that easy, Mr. Gibbs. I told Marshal Earp what he'd have to do. Well, I ain't gonna go along with that. And I ain't bluffing. Put that down. I'll scream in my mental. Hold it. Gibbs, you're under arrest. He threatened to burn me with that thing. What'd you expect? It was to be mighty fond of that animal. Have your men go get him. It's Mel Danaher. City waiting for you. You're a liar. And you're jailbait. Lift him. That's far enough. All right. Throw your guns right out of here, all of you. Come on. You two, come on. Throw out here. Am I still under arrest? Trespassing on private property, threatening Mrs. Morrison with bodily harm. Can't even look for Roscoe? No. The boss is bringing him. Roscoe! Here's your dear friend. I still say Gibbs is a rustler, but I couldn't do what I'd have to to prove it. Well? We've won, Mel. The judge will send Rep to prison. I hate you. I hate all of you. And that goes for you double, Mr. Wyatt Earp. 
Well, ma'am, I'm kind of used to being hated. Mrs. Morrison has refused to press charges against Mr. Gibbs. In the case of Mr. Cantwell, charged with cattle rustling, all the complaining witnesses have refused to testify. Mr. Cantwell, however, has agreed to surrender 31 head of doubtfully branded steers. It will be sold for charity. Any comments, Marshal Earp? Only this, Your Honor. I think the present law against cattle rustling is bad. Under the present law, the small cattle thief is hanged, while the big one becomes a respectable member of the Cattlemen's Association. I agree with you. Your remarks will be put into the official record. Courts adjourned. If you're quitting, at least I want Roscoe to have a decent bridle. I think he's a friend of mine. You ain't got a lick of sense making friends with that law man. Lucky for you, they ain't got a prison for you. There, feller. He'd arrest you for kicking at a far barrel. Hold on there, sonny. Be sure you check that gun pronto. was the gathering ground for men of every type, for derelicts as well as heroes. One of the strangest, perhaps, was the man they call a remittance man, a man who was paid to stay away from home. John, you're here early. Something wrong? Not a thing. It's a lovely morning. Can I get you some breakfast? Did you spoil this? It was nice last night, Johnny, down by the river. The moonlight on the water. I guess I never knew it could be so pretty and peaceful in Dodge. Thanks for asking me. You're welcome, miss. Miss? You called me Doris last night. Did I? I'm sorry. I sometimes forget myself. Yes, I understand. Reggie's going this morning. This month's check from England ain't going to last till the end of the month. What's got into him? I don't know. Anything happened last night? Nothing. I warned you, he's not for you. Even if he is the black sheep, them English aristocrats stick together. Nothing happened. We only went for a walk. What's he got to do with George Cantell? The gambler? Why, nothing. Johnny doesn't even know him. Well, then why did they have their heads together back there a while ago? It's since then he's been drinking like that and looking like thunder. Uh-oh. Here he comes. Mr. Dart? You have a gun on, under the bar, haven't you? Sure, for emergencies. May I borrow it, please? You never even had a gun in your hand. It has nothing to do with it. I don't lend it. <clears throat> Mr. Dart, I have some credit left, haven't I? About forty dollars. That should be enough to buy the gun, if you please. Not enough? Plenty. But a gun is used to shoot people. And if it's Cantel you were thinking about, you better think again. He's a gambler. He's good with a gun. You ain't. May I have it, please? You'd be committing suicide. 
Well, then, give me what I have left, and I'll go and buy it someplace else. Johnny, please, you mustn't. If you'll excuse me. What could I do? You'll be killed. Run and get Marshal Herb. Cancel. You want in the game? I want to talk to you. Not here. Gentlemen? I brought you something. I said not here. It's not what you think. This. Now, don't be a fool, Milton. You're no gunfighter. I know. But I'm going to kill you just the same. But you've got your gun in your hand. You call that a fair draw? Now, look. You give me a fair chance, I'll be glad to draw with you. Well, you can even kill me if you're able. I don't want the gun. I'll kill you with my bare hands. Hold it. Stay out of this, wife. Give me that gun, Johnny. No, I'm going to kill the... Oh. What business was this of yours, Herb? It's my job to take care of the peace. You remember that, Mr. Cantell. Now, he threatened my life. If you don't think I'm going to defend myself, why... Why'd he threaten to kill you? Well, I don't know. He's crazy drunk, I guess. He knew what he was doing. All right. He owes me money. I ask for it. Now, you'd better keep him out of my way. Mr. Cantell, you come gunning for him, and you're going to find me. You didn't have to hit him. The bullet would have hurt a lot worse. He'll be all right. Come on, give me a hand. Huh? Johnny. Is this yours? Yes, it is. How does he owe Cantel money? Johnny doesn't gamble. Well, not that I ever heard of. He never had any money except that monthly check from England. He always turned that over to you for this room and eats, and liquor as long as the credit lasted. Lately, it's been given out quick. Yeah, I know. Well, what'd he do then, borrow it from Canton? No, I've been putting it on the cuff. And Doris, she's been paying for it. Does he know that? She won't let me tell him. Oh. I need a drink. Oh, now, Johnny. Oh, don't treat me like a child. Let me have a drink. You here? Why'd you interfere? Why'd you do it? Cantell says you owe him money. Let's leave it at that. All right. I can't make you talk. But if you do need money, you don't have to use a gun. You got friends here in Dodge. Dart, Doris, I'd like to be a friend. You a $500 friend, Marshal? Is that how much you owe him? I said leave it. All right. But trying to kill him isn't going to solve anything. Ten chances to one, it wouldn't be Cantell who'd wind up dead anyway. His odds don't frighten me. No, I guess not. Not to a man who's trying to kill himself with a bottle. I don't need your advice. Well, you need somebody's, or you're going to wind up dead. I don't know why your folks in England send you money to stay here, but I do know it isn't doing you any good. Leave him alone, Mr. Irv. I'll tell you something else, Johnny. You could be a good man if you tried. Send those checks back, get a job, stand your own two feet. You know, you missed your calling, Marshal. You sound just like a preacher. Do I? Well, you stay away from Cantello, I'm going to toss you in jail. Now, a preacher wouldn't do that. No, Johnny. You, uh, you won't be needing this.
Johnny, you ought to listen to Wyatt. Oh, please, Mr. Dart, just go away and let me take care of him. Doris, child. Mr. Dart, I'm over 21. What? There's trouble with the Alhambra. Jonathan Milton? I don't know. Johnny? No. It's this woman, Marshal, this dirty no little... No need for names, mister. Mr. Nathaniel Cooker of Hutchinson. All right, what happened, Mr. Cooker? Robbed me. Took my pig money. Pig money? Money I got for the pigs I bring into town today. Most of it, anyways. Most of it? How much of it? Five hundred. Even? Five hundred even and twenty dollar gold pieces. Left me maybe thirty, forty dollars. How do you know she stole it? She heard me talking about it at dinner. Bragging about it. She got real friendly. I got a little drunk. You know, kind of moony. I woke up down by the river. She didn't think I'd remember her. This true, Miss Doris? Yes, I guess it is. I'd have swore she wasn't this kind. You know I don't run this kind of business, Wyatt. I know that, Henry. Miss Doris, you'll have to give him back the money. It'll go easy on you. I can't. I haven't got it. Haven't got it? How could she spend it so quick? You're out of luck, Mr. Cooker. I gotta have that money. I can't go home without it. How'd I explain things to my wife? Now, look, I'll do whatever I can. I'll take her into custody. You come on down to my office tomorrow morning and swear out a complaint. I certainly will, the dirty little crook. I said no names. Come on, Miss Doris. I'm sorry, Mr. Dart. So am I. I'll tell Johnny. Oh, no, no, please don't. He's in his room asleep. Marshal, he had nothing to do with this. He didn't even know about it. We have no accommodations for you at the jail. I'll get your room at the Dodge House. Next time, mister, don't brag. Outside. Don't worry, Marshal. I won't try to run away. You know, it's quite a coincidence. You steal $500, and Cantel wants $500 from Johnny, even. You've never done anything before like this, have you, Miss Doris? Do you think this would uh, stop a man like Cantel from killing Johnny? Oh, Marshal. Why didn't you come to me for help before you ruined your life like this, hmm? I didn't know what to do. And Johnny was so strange. Nothing seemed to mean anything to him before this, but he really wanted to kill Cantel. But why? I don't know. He wouldn't tell me anything. But, but it wasn't the gambling. I know that. Well, there's only one other thing it could be. Blackmail. Um, maybe Cantel threatened to tell Johnny's family in England some dirt. Johnny didn't care what his family thought about him, and they, they couldn't cut off the money because it was some kind of inheritance. Well, then it had to be you. Me? Did Cantel ever... Uh, did he ever know you from someplace before? I wouldn't have been allowed to know that kind of man. But he did recognize me. I knew that the first time he saw me on the street. He recognized you? He's from St. Louis. I come from a good family there. I'd uh, run away to get married, I thought. But 
Well, anyway, I was so ashamed, I, I couldn't go back. They don't know where I am or what I'm doing. Well, that's it. Marshal, I've... I've never done anything I've been ashamed of before this. I believe you, Miss Doris. But maybe Cantell threatened to tell your family some lie about you and Johnny, and well, that's what upset Johnny. But there's never been anything between us. Johnny's been a perfect gentleman, and I'm well. That wouldn't make much difference to a man like Cantell. Well, that's probably it. Doesn't do us any good to know it now. He gave Cantell $500 in untraceable gold. There's not much I can do about it. Yes, I understand. Well, you try and get some sleep. Marshal. Good night, Marshal. Arrest her, Marshal. You've got to let her go. I can't do that, Johnny. Well, then I'll take her. You know how much money she took? She didn't take it. She couldn't do such a thing. $500, Johnny. $500 even. Well, she did it for me. And maybe you'll tell me why she did it. All right, I'll tell you why. Blackmail. Can't tell threatened to tell her family in St. Louis some lie about her. Why didn't you come to me? We could have trapped him. I've had complaints before about his crooked behavior, and now we have no proof. You're right about me, Marshal. I'm not much of a man. I've tried to find a solution to my problems in a bottle. May I see her for a moment? Please. Who is it? Marshal Earp, Miss Doris. Johnny, no, go away. You mustn't get mixed up in this. Doris, there's no way to thank you. But I'll do anything. I'll do anything to help. And I'll wait for you. Oh, Johnny, you mustn't feel like that. You don't owe me anything. But I do. Doris, last night was the first time in years that I've felt alive. Oh, Johnny. If she goes to jail, I'll kill Cantor with my bare hands. That isn't going to help. Well, what will? Well, there's just one chance. If we can persuade Cooker not to sign a complaint, there won't be any charge against him. Well, let's talk to him right now. I said if. He may not listen to us. He'll listen. Wait a minute. The money's going to have to be paid back. It will be. It may take a while, but I'll do it. Let's go find him. <laughs> so I went into the dining room with my pig money, and this gal heard me talking about him. <laughs> you know, the gals will always take a little shine to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess she had your fool, huh? Thought she was just a waitress. But I spotted her. <laughs> Shut up! Ah, but Johnny. Oh, you can't talk that way about her. I'll kill him. No, you're not. Now, you go on back to the Alhambra and wait for me. Go on. All right. All right. All right, break it up, Mr. Cooker. I said break it up. Well, let's have our drink before we get out of here. I was just talking. You do a lot of talking. Now, sit down. Uh, what do you want with me, Marshal? I have a little proposition for you, Mr. Cooker. That girl, she's not bad. She's never been in trouble before. You expect me to believe that? It's true. 
If she goes to jail now, it'll ruin her life. She should have thought of that before. The point is, Mr. Cooker, she deserves a second chance. You're mighty big-hearted, ain't you, on my money? You'll get your money back. If you agree not to sign the complaint, now that's my proposition. She gonna pay me? Then who is, you? Mr. Jonathan Milton, the gentleman who was just here. He's some sort of a limey lord, ain't he? Only he's almost a tramp now. <laughs> How's he gonna pay it back? It'll take a while. He'll pay a little each month. Oh, no. He don't get no credit from me. I want my money. I told you I can't go home without it. What did I tell my wife? What are you gonna tell her anyway when your charges appear in the newspaper? The truth? And are you so sure the girl's the only one to blame? Wouldn't you still have that money of yours safe if you hadn't had a few ideas of your own? Well, you know how it is, Marshal. We all make mistakes. This girl never did. Now, are you going to be the one that's going to ruin her life? Well, I don't hold her no malice. But I got to have my money back. I said you'd get it. Well, you give me my money right here in my hand and I won't sign the complaint. Maybe you'll lend it to him. Or maybe you can find it where she put it. That's a good idea, Mr. Cooker. Let's go. Where are we going? To do a little gambling. Sneak up on a man, Marshal? Sometimes. You want to deal me a hand? Sure. Why not? With that deck. Yes, of course. Place your bets, gentlemen. Marshal? I bet $500. Well, don't worry. If I lose, I'm good for it. And I'm sure you have $500, Mr. Cantel. It's all right. You know, if there's one thing in this town we don't like, it's a crooked gambler. Well, what do you mean by that? Hmm. There's been a lot of conversation, probably just from poor losers. Say you use marked cards. I'll play these. Actually, I don't pay too much attention to poor losers. Anyway, I know quite a bit about marked cards. Take that next card, for instance. Well, what about it? Well, you have 16 showing. That next card should just happen to be a five. You'd have 21, you'd win all the bets. But I'd have to take you to jail. Because I read that card as a five. Why, you're crazy. Am I? You sure you want to turn over that card? I'll pay 17. Pay 19. That satisfy you, Mr. Cooker? Fine, thanks. Now, you go on back to Hutchison. Next time you come to Dodge City, you bring your wife. She'd enjoy the trip. You get out of town, too, can't tell. Why? I haven't done anything. The crime's a lot worse than marked cars, but that'll do for an excuse. Now, you get out before breakfast. Stay where you are, Tony. You too, careful. I've got a score to settle with you. What about me, Johnny? You too, Wyatt, if you don't stand in my way. Then it'll have to be me. Now, nobody touch a gun. Put it down. I'm warning you, Wyatt. Stay back.
Oh, Wyatt. What's going to happen to her now? Nothing's going to happen to either one of you. Give me a hand. Doctor says you'll be back to normal in a couple of days. No, I'm afraid it's more serious than that. It killed a man. Jonathan Milton Esquire. From now on, it's just plain Johnny Milton. And Wyatt, I'm going to send back those checks. If Mr. Dart has a job for me at the Alhambra. Sure, Johnny. And maybe soon, when I get a few dollars together. Well, that shouldn't take too long with both of you working. You know, in this case, I uh, don't really mind killing a man. Among the friends who invariably got Wyatt Earp into trouble was Ned Buntline, popular author of dime novels about the western frontier. Mr. Buntline admired Wyatt to the point of idolatry. This was a pleasant, if embarrassing, attitude, and Wyatt's sense of humor enabled him to forgive mild bragging by the writer. But when Buntline made Wyatt the hero of a new yarn entitled King of the Frontier... Morning, Mayor Kelly. Wyatt, have you seen this? Have you seen this now? Let's see, King of the Frontier by Ned Buntline. Buntline sure trims him out, doesn't he? Yeah, but that's your picture. He's made you the hero. You're King of the Frontier. Oh, no. Yeah, he's got your bulldog and steers. He's got you riding a loco bronc, winning a horse race, and a chuck wagon race, and that ain't all. Oh, what else do I do? You shoot it out with a man at 100 yards. He uses a rifle, and you use your bunt line. <laughs> oh, well, uh, who gets killed? The man with the Winchester. You should sue him. He's made a plum fool out of you. And worse than that, you deliberately kill a man. Oh, just keep your shirt on, Mayor Kelly. Buntline's readers know him by now, and if any of them ask me about it, I'll swear I didn't do it. But cross my heart. And little did Tex, the killer, realize what he must face. But he had never seen the awesome Buntline special. All right, all right. This weapon was more than a match for Tex's Winchester at any range up to 500 yards. Mr. Gibbs. Just, oh, 500 yards. Look, at first I thought it was funny, now I'm getting a mite riled. I don't blame you. Why don't you see the feller that wrote it? Because it's not worth the trip east. You won't have to go east. One line's over at the Dodge house. Just rode into town with a lazy cue. Speaking of the devil. <laughs> And a little bit of breakfast, too. Right, eh? boss? Right. There you are, Miles. <laughs> yeah. You're good company, Ned. And you sure put Wyatt Earp on the spot. Wyatt? Why, why, he's a very dear friend of mine. As a matter of fact, as soon as we have a little spot of breakfast, I shall go over and pay him a visit. Now, he ain't as good as you say he is. Now, now, Miles, you're my host. I, I came out here to see a cattle drive firsthand. But I won't hear a word against Wyatt. Everything I wrote about him is gospel truth. Ah, oh, he can't do half the things you got him doing in that book. You want to bet? Sure. Five thousand dollars. Piker. All right, ten thousand. What if Herb backs down? Wyatt is not a man to evade a challenge. If he backs down, I pay you the ten thousand anyway. You got a bet? Ah. Well, Wyatt, my friend, well, are you a sight for sore eyes. Howdy, Mr. Buntline, good to see you. Well, are you still carrying the, the Buntline special? You know it, best gun in the West. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say, I'm out here visiting Miles Brick of the Lazy Q. You know him, don't you? Uh, sure. Well, come on over and set away with it. You had breakfast? Uh, yes, sir, thank you. Well, here, Miles, here's the king himself. <laughs> king, sit down and rest yourself. Well, thank you, Mr. Brick, but uh, I haven't got time. I uh, see, Mr. Buntline, that everybody's read your new book. We just made a little bet on you, Marshal. Bet? Well, I hope you didn't take any. Take any? I took all of it, $10,000. You can have the same, Herb. Mr. Buntline, I, uh, I'd like to speak to you for a few minutes when you uh, get finished, huh? In my office. Sure, Wyatt. <laughs> oh, have you made a bad bet. <laughs> And you let Breck one swagger you into a sucker bet, huh? But why? You, you can do all the things I wrote about in the book. 
Mr. Buntline, I have enough trouble with this job. Now, you expect me to risk my neck trying to live up to what you write in the book? You're right. You're absolutely right. I'll pay off. What do you mean, pay off? Well, I, um, I should have consulted with you. I, I agreed with him that if, if you backed out, I'd pay him the $10,000 anyway. Oh, no. Have you got it? My dear sir, are you implying that for one moment I would... Well, I haven't got all of it, but I think I can get an advance from my publisher. Wait a minute. You say all I have to do is beat the lazy Q outfit in these cowhand stunts, huh? Yeah, just when I wrote in the book. All right, I'll try it. I don't want Miles Brick getting away with something like this. No, no, now, now forget it. I was wrong and I'm gonna pay off. You pay off nothing. You tell Breck, I'll tackle his best man on each stunt. Well, that's spoken like the real Wyatt Earp, the king of the frontier. <laughs> the lazy cues are bragging there's been 10,000 bet on you. Everything that idiot wrote in that book you got to make good? Uh, just the cow instance. Can you rope and tie a calf for Bulldog of Steel? Well, my brothers and I played around with them back in Illinois. How about riding a loco bronc? Well, I could get my neck busted. Look, Mr. Buntline cornered me. Now, if I back out of this childish nonsense, all the cowhands will start taking pot shots at me. Won't the men of this country ever grow up? Most of them, in time. But there's one thing that's already growed up in them. Yeah? Courage, wife. A man can be backwards and stupid out here. But he's got to be brave. Gramley. Herb's going to shoot against a Winchester at 100 yards? <laughs> That's something Ned forgot. Sort of a surprise for the finish. Herb would be a fool to do it, boss. And Herb sure ain't no fool. Man does many foolish things when he's cornered. All right, let's get that herd started for Dodge. Just made some fresh coffee. Want some? Right. Up there is a tame calf they want you to rope. Call a foul and make them get a wild one. No. You loading the dice, Miles. He sure is. A tame calf can dodge a rope all day long. If I can't think faster than a calf, I better quit right now. Turn, Miles. We can see it on the calf. <laughs> hey, Ricky, get set for the bulldogging. Wonderful, Wyatt. <clears throat> Did you hear me? 16 seconds? I heard you.
Stay off him, you're still ahead. Oh, I never knew such ferocious horses existed. All right, we'll call it a tie. No. Take the twitch off him. He's gonna pull and stomp you. Take that bridle off him. You've got to put him in the chute first. And what's wrong with that bridle? Horses don't like spade bits. I'll do it myself. Here. Split a horse's tongue with that. Mr. Gibbs, get that bucket of water over there, will you? Right. But Wyatt, you don't you don't really mean to ride that horse, do you? I've called it a tie. All right, let him down. Let him down. Come in and grab this here. All right. Bite him. That's enough. All right, hold him. Hold him. Did you give that bucking horse opium? <laughs> no, sir. Well, then, how did you tame him? Well, sir, actually, a horse is not too difficult to tame. Just about do anything you ask him to if you're patient with him. I took the bridle off that bronc, gave him his head, and he, uh, well, it confused him, so he just decided to do nothing. <laughs> well, then you did tame him. No, sir. See, a horse pulls a buggy or lets you ride him because that's what he's trained to do doesn't know his own strength. Now, you take that mule over there. You mean Mr. Gibbs' animal, the one he calls Roscoe? Mm-hmm. Now, a mule is certainly just as intelligent as a horse. Yeah, well, now, Roscoe's tame, and he's obedient, and he works cheerfully. I'll bet you he does. Well, let's ask Mr. Gibbs. Mr. Gibbs? Huh? Oh, ready and where? Ready in a minute. Why? Now, I want you uh, to explain to Mr. Buntline here why Roscoe there works for you. Now, he is tame and loyal, isn't he? This mule? He knows if he don't work, he don't eat. He ain't got much use for me, but he knows the next boss might be meaner. Now, Wyatt's horse, he don't even know that much. I've seen him shy at a piece of paper and try to run smack into a barbed wire fence. Well, um, if I told my readers that. <laughs> Time for the race. I don't think you've ever driven a chuck wagon, and I aim to prove it for $10,000. Oh, now, why don't you give up, huh? Get it on the line, Earp. Well, at least this is the last of it. Now, no more bets, Mr. Buntline. Oh, never again, Wyatt, I swear. Well, I'm going down to the finish line, and good luck. Good luck to you. Hey, what's so difficult about racing chuck wagons? Well, they ain't balanced. Turn over mighty easy. Anything else? Yeah. You can't call no fouls. You mean Brick's driver can sideswipe me? Well, that's that's why I put Roscoe on the near side. Because he can bump and he can bite. Yeah. Now you watch your temper. And you let Roscoe do the thinking. He ain't been putting no books, but he's drug chuck wagons through lots of races. All right, get on your marks. Wait a minute. Don't... Get set! 
Tried to break Roscoe's leg. Now listen, this is a race, not a fight. Now shut up and race. Come on, boys, pull that wheel over here. Well, Why don't you watch that old meal? I don't know whether it's him or you. You hear that, Roscoe? He's kind of an ornery fellow, ain't he, huh? Come on, get him. All right, are you all free? Pull the back end out a little more. Come on, boys. Are you free? Yeah. Fix nothing. You just sit there and hush up. Mr. Gibbs? Yes, sir. Take Roscoe and my horse over the stable. Scared? Your man quit and he showed good sense. Well, Wyatt, technically we could say that we won this event. I mean, at least we didn't lose it. We could, well, you quit first, you know. Wyatt, they quit first. Earp's ahead so far, but he ain't won the shootout. The shootout? Yeah, don't you remember your own book? Here. It says right here. Earp shoots it out with his Buntline special against a man with a Winchester at 100 yards. Oh, no, we didn't include that. That was only... Everything you've got Earp doing in this book's included, or you pay me an extra 5000 Now, Wyatt has already risked his life to save me money. Now, I won't ask him to fight a duel. If you feel that way, $15,000. All right. I, I, I can only raise ten now. I'll take your IOU. Don't pay him, Mr. Buntline. He expects Wyatt to fight a duel against a man with a Winchester. Now, there are limits, you know. Don't pay him. Not until I talk to Wyatt first. No. Now here's here's $8,600. I'll give you my note for the rest. I'm holding the stakes until I talk to Wyatt. You got any objection? No. All I want Wyatt Earp to do is to come to talk with that Buntline special. <laughs> I can hand load some cartridges with more powder and a heavier bullet. I'd bet on you myself. Well, I don't understand, Mr. Gibbs. You said it was nonsense at the start. Well, I... I kind of underestimated you a mite on them cowhand stunts. Well, shooting at a man is a lot different than bulldog and a steer. Well, I can tell you one thing. You're going to have to do it or kill several men to save your reputation. Take that butt line special. You ever think about how many men are scared of it? Plug my shotgun over there. I'm supposed to be able to hit a man at 500 yards. And they know my 10-gauge slug puts such a big hole in a man that there ain't no doctor can save him. Consequently, I ain't had to shoot very often. Well, it's the betting angle, Mr. Gibbs. Well, you don't have to kill a feller. Ain't but one main fault you got. There just ain't enough Roscoe in you. I'll pay break his money. No, you're right. I am just this once. It's childish, this shootout business. It's just the trouble. Most hoodlums are childish. If I back down from that lazy Q outfit, it'd be just like you say. I have to shoot a lot of grown-up brats. I quit my job. You insist on one thing with Mr. Breck. You tell him I want to shoot lion on my belly. His man can do the same. How come? Because I'm not Mr. Buntline's king of the frontier. If I'm going to shoot at 100 yards, I want to use my two hands to steady the gun and also be a smaller target for the rifle. Well, I don't know about that now. In the book here, it says that uh, you stood against the skyline and shot it out. stupid, silly me. book. Now, Brex man and I aren't going to be shooting blank cartridges. You going to make the deal or not? You say, boss. Could do it like the book says, though. Let him have it his way, boss. 
Laying down on my stomach is better for me. I yeah, know, but the book says... All right, you shoot the Winchester. Relax. Tell her if we agree. Mr. Gibbs, 100 yards, start pacing it off. Time and make that first shot count. Don't worry, boss. I'll get him. Wyatt. Wyatt, there's a law against dueling in Kansas. Mr. Gormley threatened to kill me on sight. Wrote me a little note. Take a look yonder. I'm in sight. Now, no, Wyatt, please, don't do it. I, I can pay Breck off. I'm not doing it to save you a bet, Mr. Buntline. Then why? Well, you should know that, Mr. Mayor. Any Johnny Law that backs down on a threat has to give up his star. Now, you gentlemen are in the line of fire. Move on. I'll fire one shot. Any commands? Right. I'm set. Mr. Buntline, two cartridges left. You want to try your hand? Oh, why did I? I. I. I'm sorry, Mr. Buntline. I shouldn't have said that to a friend. <laughs> đến với kênh hướng dẫn tô tranh của mình hôm nay thì mình có một bức tranh là một bạn gái rất là xinh xắn và đeo một chiếc túi rất là xinh đội một chiếc mũ hoa và bây giờ thì chúng mình sẽ cùng nhau tô màu bức tranh này với mình nhé
Thật hả? Thế là một đứa nôn mửa rồi đấy rồi xong rồi Ai đọc đúng không? Sau 4 năm mẹ ra đấy Chị ăn uống có thể tắt mẹ xô nữa Thời ở mẹ nhà nữa <cười> Thế Người ta cũng có máu tiền rồi kìa